That's called the weakness. Anybody's got any idea why that is? It's actually simple leverage. <clears throat> if our swords bind like this, I can press really hard while he only has to twist his wrist and just simply puts my uh, weapon aside. While, um, let's just assume that uh, the swords crossed each other, if my strength is in his weakness, I can easily control his sword. So this is simple leverage. And this was used in the uh, this was used in medieval fighting. It says so in the, in the treatises explicitly. Um, that's one simple law. If you can just hold that. Then there's another uh, law which uh, is extremely important if we want to reconstruct Viking Age or Iron Age uh, sword and shield fighting. Now I need another volunteer, please. You look brave. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Yes. Ah, nice, please see me here. Okay, um, if you just push against my hand, I push against yours. So he's standing strong against me, that's good. Don't lean in. <laughs> just push from the hip, that would be... Yeah, that's what a martial artist would do. Now, the human body can give pushing or pulling power uh, full force um, only if he uh, makes itself extremely vulnerable against lateral pressure. Okay? So as soon as as soon as there's le as soon as we are pressing here, we are weak here. Okay. Same if we uh, if you just press against my hand laterally. Now we are pressing this way. This makes us weak against push and pull. Okay. Thank you. Um. So if that was a real sword. We call that a simulator because it's not really a sword. It's not sharp. So. And it's uh, it's got a rounded it's got a round tip and it's extremely flexible. So if that was a real sh uh, sword, how would a swordsman apply pressure uh, laterally or push and pull wise? What's your guess? Well, a swordsman would. What does a swordsman uh, want to do? He wants to, for instance, cut into his neck. He can only do that if he delivers pushing or pulling pressure, right? And this is done with which part of the blade? With the edges, right? That's the sharp parts on a real sword. So that means that um, if somebody, if uh, Mikkel strikes at me, <coughs> yeah, do it slowly, he's giving either pushing or pulling pressure. Now that makes him, uh, that makes him weak where? Makes him weak uh, at the sides, right? Mm -hmm. Did you get that? <clears throat> so, there's another, uh, there's another biomechanical law if, when you fight with weapons. If we press laterally, the both of us, the edge is always stronger than the flat. If I just simply twist my hand, I've got the control in the bind. Right? That's another law. It's, it's anatomy and physics. It's biomechanics. Okay? There's, it's been like that all the time, always. It's nothing we just simply made up. So, and this concept is extremely important when you use Viking shields. Now, this takes us to the big round shields. Um, this is a replica of a Viking round shield. Um, it's made from split planks, which are glued together with hide glue. Uh, they're covered with uh, linen on either side and um, there's a rawhide edge stitched to it. Um, it might just as well have been covered with, uh, with, with um, parchment or, as we say, rawhide, which makes it heavier. Now, um, now we've got this grip here, the um, shield vessel. Uh, what's, the, what's the Danish word for that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and we've got this boss here. Now, when you see when you see reenactment, then um, that's what I used to do for, for 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 ages. Then people hold the shield up square on, presenting the flat. All right. <clears throat> Weapons are always cleverly designed. If I see this, it doesn't re it doesn't look that clever, really, does it? I mean, if that was the use of a shield to uh, simply ward off blows or thrusts or strikes, then you would come up with a different design. So why is the Viking shield designed this way? 
kind of strange that they would not uh, attach uh, straps to hold it this way. <clears throat> well, that's because uh, you fight differently here. And um, we came up with that uh, because we were considering not only the later manuals, but also um, biomechanics. Now, uh, we pick up swords to give you some impressions of the concepts we came up with, and I will explain why we think this might have been uh, part of uh, the repertoire of Viking Age fighters. So, um, this is what you usually see, people standing like this. Now, um, what your face, right? I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is how people, no, no, stand square on. This is how people usually stand in reenactment. Now, if we use what, we, what I've just showed, that the edge is stronger than the flat, if we use that on a shield, we could actually try to attack, not with a sword, but with a shield, like so, which at the same instant leaves us a gap here. Now, that looks more clever. And in fact, um, this is a technique that is shown in one of the later treatises. It's uh, actually, uh, it's in one of uh, Hans Talhofer's treatises on fighting with the dueling shield, the judicial shields. I don't know if you have any idea how they look. They look pretty much like a, like a huge, or like a spear about that high with, uh, with an oval, uh, with an oval um, flat to it. They were extremely heavy. They could only rotate around these axes. But um, he does make use of the principle of using the flat again, uh, the edge against the flat. Um, so a fighter who knows that concept would never stand like that because, of course, uh, can, he just can stand on the other side. <coughs> not, on, not only does that turn his shield and create an opening, see that? It also blocks him here. All that he can do is slide down there. Now, um, of course, the sword may come down and possibly touch me, but it doesn't do, no, it doesn't do much harm. If you do test cutting, you will see this is of little interest, particularly if it's only hacking. Swords only work if they cut. Yeah? And the cut is pressing and drawing or pe pressing and pushing. All of you know that when you're eating a steak and you just simply press down the, the knife on the steak, yeah, you won't get satiated. You have, to, you, have to, you have to pull and to push. So it's a cutting implement and that's, the same holds true for the sword. Now um, back to this very situation. So let's just assume for some reason in a fight I managed to pin him like this. Yeah? I pushed my shield into his armpit thereby completely controlling his sword while I could either chop off his, head, uh, his, his leg and thrust him through the uh, torso. Now look where the sword is going down. It's coming down on the boss. Yeah? Yeah? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> yeah? Maybe if I, uh, if I retire. But I was thinking um, if I wanted to prevent this from happening, okay, I could improve the boss. Now that's a more elaborate boss. Okay. So if I get into a situation where the flat of a sword slides down, let's present it to those people as well. <clears throat> if you can just uh, attack my, my armpit. <laughs> Particularly if these shields were a lot bigger. A sled, these are what, 80 centimeters? Yeah. Well, how, how big are the largest shields found in the Iron Age? 105. 105, that adds quite a, that adds quite a, uh, uh, quite a lot of reach. Now, uh, if that was even a bigger shield, so you attack me here, pinning it, then I would be standing here, and I might, uh, as my, as my sword comes down, I might, it might get caught here by these extensions that you see on Iron Age shields. Particularly if I'm retreating, because I know, because I know this attack is coming and my sword is cutting down, trying to get around, and around the shield and thrust here, I might get caught on one of these. Yeah? So I think that's just a theory. It's, this is really f to give you uh, inspirations what to look for. I mean, particularly this uh, trumpet shape that you see on Iron Age uh, boss extensions makes a lot more sense if it was developed for something to catch a blade sliding down the shield 
than the spikes and the spikes were replaced by the trumpet shape and really uh, there's some literature saying that these spikes and the trumpet shaped extensions are they're probably weapons now um, if that was a weapon how close would Mikkel have to come to me in order to hit me with that weapon yeah? it just doesn't work I've got all the reach I need with this with a shield and with a sword it's a stupid idea